So let's start looking at the IEC 61508 standard. This title is a bit of a mouthful, Functional Safety, Electrical, Electronic and Programmable Electronic Safety Related Systems. The first edition was published in 98, second edition more recently in 2010. This functional safety standard, it considers the software lifecycle phases and covers electrical, electronic and programmable electronics. So an electronic system, for example, an electronic would be a solid state, non-programmable electronic device. Electrical systems may be an electromechanical device. And then the programmable electronic, well this is based on computer technology, so this may be comprised of hardware, software, input-output units for example. So we have microprocessors, ASICs and PLCs, and this is the area that we'll focus on during this webinar because this really relates to software programming. The IEC introduces these safety integrity levels as a, as a way of monitoring, as a way of a level of different safety integrity to see what the risk factor is involved. We'll come on to this on the next slide. The second edition introduced this concept of a difference between online support tools and offline support tools. So an online support tool is something that can directly influence the safety related system during the runtime and the offline support tools are those which are used during the development process but don't really impact on the online on time running. So the safety integrity levels, there are four discrete levels, one to four. One is the lowest safety integrity level and four has the highest safety integrity level, where this would require also the lowest probability of failure because this is the level which has the highest risk to human safety. The offline support tools are also split into three categories. We have T1 through T3, where T1 is something that generates no output. So, for example, dumb text editors. You have smarter text editors which help you to write your code, but this is, wouldn't be considered to be T1 because this actually impacts on the output. T2 is something that would support test or verification of the design or the executable code. So this is where static analysis tools lie. T3 are things that generate outputs which can directly or indirectly contribute to the executable code compilers and operating systems, for example. These are the, the sections that are within the IEC 61508 standard. We're going to focus generally on part three, the software requirements. Throughout part three, there's a lot of text to tell you how you should write your software requirements, how you validate your software requirements, how you show traceability through your requirements to your software design. In the appendices there are various tables that show you the requirements that you would need to adhere to at different SIL levels. A couple of those tables here for example, <clears throat> excuse me, table A3 within the software design and development, support tools and programming languages. So here you have a table of one to four where each entry, each technical measure, should be complied to separately. Where you have a letter, say 4A, 4B, those are alternatives. We have the highly recommended, denoted by HR, recommended by R, and the no recommendation for or against with the dashes. This is specific to the IEC 61508 standards. Other standards write their tables differently. So if we take, for example, the, the suggestion, it's highly recommended that you choose a programming language, programming language which is suitable for your environment, suitable for your produced software. And also that you select a strongly typed programming language. So this pushes you more towards C++ and C rather than Perl, for example. And each of these entries, there's also a reference to another annex which gives you more details as to what you should look at and how do you choose a suitable programming language. Here we have on number four, for example, we also have certified tools and certified translators. So they recommend that you choose a tool which has been certified or a translator which has been certified. Alternatively, it's highly recommended for you to use a tool which has an increased confidence from use. Where something is highly recommended, 
you would need to show evidence or have a reasoning for why you would choose not to go against, go for that technique or measure. In another table, table A4 here, we have the software design and development, detail design. One of the entries in this table, number five, is that you should use design and coding standards. This is recommended for SIL level one, but highly recommended for all the higher safety integrity levels. This entry in, in table A4 points to another table within another annex, which gives a little bit more detail for what your design and coding standards should include. So here we have table B1, design and coding standards. The same numbering format, 1 through 8, with 3A and 3B being alternatives, and your highly recommended, recommended. If we look through some of these, you'll probably recognise, for those of you who are writing in the C programming language, and maybe those of you who are in the automotive sector who recognise the MISRA C rules. We'll come on to this a little bit later. But you'll see, for example, that they recommend that you limit the use of pointers, or limit use of recursion. So this is the IEC 61508. This is the generic standard, not aimed in particular at any industry. 